Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel and thanks for logging on. Today we're discussing the Ulysse Nordent Macho Palladium. You can see this 95% pure palladium cased watch and purchase it on our website. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you enjoy these videos and click on the card in the upper right hand corner of the screen at any time to see our full listing for this watch with additional accessories included, high resolution images and naturally complete pricing details. On my wrist, 6 and a third inches, 16 centimeters in circumference. This case looks remarkably familiar, and there's a good reason for that. The new for 2007 Macho Palladium helped Ulysse Norden to amortize the cost of the tooling for the epic 2006 UN 160 anniversary watch. The Macho Palladium takes the same profile of that watch, which was rendered in either rose or white gold and swaps the material specification for 95% pure palladium, a member of the platinum family. Anti-allergenic, completely unplated, and effectively, the feel and the heft, the sensation of precious metal on the wrist. Palladium is an interesting and exotic alternative to conventional precious metals and steel alike. Now on my wrist, I can feel the heft of the watch, and that's the first part of the ergonomic equation and the ergonomic tail. In terms of actual measurements, the watch is wide, 43 millimeters, not including the crown, from nine to three across the case. Now in terms of thickness, it's not really that thick. The watch is only 11 millimeters thick, so it will fit underneath a tight dress cuff or sleeve. There should be no problems there. In terms of breadth across the wrist, the watch is 53 millimeters from lug to lug, but because of the sharp downturn of the lugs and the unique cambered profile of the case, which actually arcs over the wrist, this watch wears smaller than the 53 millimeter lug to lug measurement suggests. It also has the best kind of strap to lug attachment. Essentially, the one where there is no daylight visible between strap and case flank, so it has a very integrated look like the UN160 before it, but you can pull the strap straight down. It doesn't want to fight you and flare out. So if you have a smaller wrist, again, the watch arcs over it, draping its case across the wrist's curve, rather than sticking out stridently and creating the look of overhang. This watch can be worn on a wrist far smaller than mine. You can see my wrist is 16 centimeters in circumference, but this watch would wear well down to a wrist size of, in my estimation, 14.5 centimeters in circumference. Now the watch is hefty, so you know you're wearing a precious metal timepiece. You know it's not steel. The strap itself is dramatically bolstered at the lug, but it thins out considerably for flexibility away from the lug junction. And it is a very dark monotone stitch rectangular scale alligator leather in navy blue. I'm not sure how the watch is coming across in the light box, but it is a very dark blue. And it's paired with a little bit of a surprise. This is a double deployant, twin trigger actuated, 18 karat white gold clasp. White gold in its 18 karat form is much harder and hardier than palladium in its 95% pure form. So given the strength of white gold compared to palladium, UN actually upgrades the material in the clasp, creating it out of 18 karat white gold, specifically for long wearing durability. And again, thanks to the twin trigger action, the spring is built into the swing arm. This heavy watch can't simply jump open. It doesn't have that friction fit vulnerability. Once buckled, it's secure and it needs to be positively disengaged. The case is an interesting piece because it does have that unique camber. So the crystals are actually cambered as well. And this is a unique way of making a sapphire very infrequently seen due to the cost of creating a cambered sapphire. This is something you only see typically on watches from the likes of Richard Mille and, in some cases, Franck Muller. Here, it's most unexpected, but most welcome, a handsome and subtle refinement to a watch that is handsome and subtle in manifold fashion. Now, you can see that the watch has a deeply textured, multi-plane dial. Starting at the lowest level, you can see the date at six o'clock. It anchors a vertical axis from 12 to six, comprising obviously the Arabic numeral 12 in applied and polished white gold, a special power reserve that Ulysse Nardin has drawn from its history, originally fitted as a mechanism to a 1912 pocket watch. I'm gonna show you how it works here just because it's so different from conventional power reserves in that the scale itself moves when you wind the watch and then the index hand moves as the watch discharges. 
It's a fascinating and handsome refinement on the underlying 2892A2 base caliber. Moving down, there are broadsword hands blued at center with vast luminescent swatches. What you may not be able to see is that all of the stations of the hour are also luminescent with subtle luminova dots. And then anchoring the dial at 6 o'clock, there's the date magnifier and the constant second subdial. The watch does feature hacking seconds such that when you pull the crown to extremity, You've hacked the chronometer grade movement and you can precisely synchronize to a known accurate reference time. A very subtle railroad minutes track outboard of the center dial, which is itself a sunburst silver, allows you to more precisely track the minutes of the day. Now the case back, which features a 22 carat white gold Ulysse Nardin winding mass, reveals a chronometer grade ETA2892A2. The modular component featuring the power reserve is designed and constructed entirely in-house by Ulysse Norden. The 2892A2 is modified once it arrives at the manufacturer. The watch features a 42-hour power reserve, smooth bi-directional automatic winding, of course hacking seconds when you pull the crown, as well as a quick set corrector for the date at 6 o'clock. You can see this unique Ulysse Norden Macho Palladium and purchase it on our website.